Inside every cell is the DNA blueprint for any living organism. DNA is packaged in thread-like structures called chromosomes. Chromosomes contain a vast amount of information, which takes up a lot of space. Imagine this yarn as a strand of chromosome. Each human cell contains a length of chromosomes nearly two meters long that must fit into a cell nucleus that is only about six micrometers in size. Now imagine trying to fit this length of yarn into a space one millionth the size of a meter. So how does it fit? Proteins, they are the key. Very specialized proteins help organize the genetic material so that it can fit into a nucleus and express the traits contained in the blueprint. And my lab works on proteins that help in that process. My name is Jennifer Gurton, and I'm a scientist at the Stowers Institute for Medical Research. So in, inside our bodies, all the cells have the same DNA sequences, but why are there differences in gene expressions? The genome organization or DNA interactions can impact gene expressions. And we're interested in studying what kind of proteins are involved in these genome organizations. And one protein that we're interested in is cohesin. Cohesin complex is important for DNA interactions because it can grab and hold two pieces of DNA together. This way, cohesin may regulate gene expression. It turns out that these organizational proteins that my lab studies are mutated in human developmental syndromes, including Robert syndrome and Cornelia de Lange syndrome. And these syndromes are characterized by craniofacial abnormalities. Uh, the kids can have limb defects, and they can have anywhere from mild to very severe mental retardation. The mutations in these proteins that organize the chromosomes turned out to disrupt the formation of the nucleolus. We used budding yeast as a model system to study this. The nucleolus is a substructure within the nucleus. It's the place where ribosomes are made. Ribosomes are these amazing little machines that make all the proteins that, that a cell or a body needs uh, to grow. We thought that if the nucleolus itself was disrupted, perhaps this would affect the synthesis of proteins and the assembly of ribosomes. And in fact, that's exactly what we found. The coolest thing about this project is that it enables me to use a variety of different techniques to answer some basic questions about how genome organization changes could result in gene expression. It was very surprising to us that the disruption of the chromosome organization would impact protein synthesis. But once we realized this, we wondered whether or not this had anything to do with these human syndromes. We studied this by getting cells uh, from patients that had Robert syndrome, and we looked at the nucleolus. And what we found was that the nucleolar structure was very strange in these cells, was very disrupted. This was very exciting to us because it suggested that our findings in yeast had some bearing on what might be going on in the human cells. In the patient cells, what we found was that the ribosomes themselves were not being uh, made appropriately and protein synthesis was inhibited. This gave us the idea that we could actually target protein synthesis and this might rescue some of the defects in these cells. And in fact, that's exactly what we found. We tried in human cells and in zebrafish models to increase protein synthesis. And we found that when we did this, we actually had a pretty amazing rescue effect on the function of the cells. This was a really exciting finding for us. These organizational proteins are often mutated in cancer. In the future, we're really interested in trying to understand what these mutations are doing, how they're causing cancer. And one of the ideas that we have is that this organization of the nucleolar structure may be part of the way that these mutations cause cancer. It's amazing to think that by probing the disruption of proteins that organize chromosomes in yeast, researchers have been able to find correlations with those same proteins in humans. And this has opened the door to a whole new line of questions about how these disruptions in chromosome organization might be causing cancer.